Hi there. Now that we've looked at the basic color correction tools, color wheels and curves, we can start looking at more key and mask based secondary color correction. What qualifies as HSL curves inside of DaVinci Resolve can be found in the curves editor using either the drop down menu in the top right corner or any of these dot switches at the top. The HSL curves look very similar to one another for the most part and work very much like the regular curves tool, but instead of targeting each individual channel, the curves will adjust the overall hue, saturation, or luminance based on either the hue that you specify or the luminance. You can always tell what a curve's purpose is because it uses the first value to affect the second. So let's start with something really simple. I have a shot of the actors in front of some graffiti and maybe the director has told me to change the blue graffiti into orange or yellow graffiti. There's three ways I can select which hue I want to target. The easiest one is to just click on it using this eyedropper tool that is active by default whenever you're on the color page. As soon as I click on it, three points appear on my hue versus hue curve. The two points on either side are locking off the third point, which will be the only portion of this color range that moves. If these points weren't here, then the entire line would be moving and you could see we'd get a pretty psychedelic effect. So those two points are pretty important. And I can now start rotating through the different hues by going up and down this graph. When I go for more extreme colors, it reveals that the selection is imperfect, as you can tell from the graininess. I can improve the clarity of my selection by extending the range of the colors to include all the little shadows and highlighted bits as well. So I'll just grab the two points on either side and pull them further apart to get a much cleaner change in color. I could even grab the purple area if I extend it far enough. And now all of the graffiti has changed. So I could do Command D and you'll notice that the rest of the image is more or less untouched and it's just this area that's been targeted. His shorts have definitely been affected as well, and that's because they're a similar color to this section. So ideally, I'd want to use something like a power window or a mask to isolate this area to get a cleaner result. And you can see that it will also move together with the clip, so this isn't just a one-frame thing. Uh, there's shadows, and there's his arm that passes in front of the graffiti and it all stays intact. So it's a fantastic tool. The other HSL curves work in very much the same way. So here's an image with some good sharp colors and this time I'm going to be affecting the saturation based on hue. So the second way that we can isolate a color would be to estimate by eye where you think it falls on the hue range. Hold shift and drop off two points to lock off the color on either side, and then drop your final point and determine if you're targeting the right area. There we go. So you can see I can really emphasize their clothes by upping the saturation on the blue hue, or I can desaturate it and make it look really dull and gray. Uh, all comes down to what the director is trying to say with the shot. I can continue to work on this image and affect the luminance of this blue hue and this time I'll employ the third method of selecting colors and that is using one of the swatches at the bottom of the HSL curves palette. I'm going to select blue and that's automatically going to drop off my controls and now I can decide to make it darker or I can decide to make it lighter. Now quite a lot of my image is being affected as I do this because these control points are very far apart. So I have to bring them in closer together to remove some of the influence on the background. If we look at the before and after, you can see that we've made some very dramatic changes to this image. Every point that you select reflects its values in the bottom right hand corner, so you can always go in there and make further changes manually. Additionally, all the points have the ability to take on Bezier curves, like we saw in the previous curves editor controls. So that gives you even further precision as to which hue you're selecting and how much of it. Thank you very much for watching and until next time.